Pat's Two Cents with Saturday's message, which is be aware, but fear not. All right. And we are going to Job chapter 5. Starting at verse 6. Anoint, Father, please. Anoint heavily. Although affliction cometh not, forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields to set up on high those that be low that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. He disappointeth the devices of the crafty. Hmm, I love that one. He disappointeth the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. You ever see a person get thrown out of a bar and you get two bouncers, one's got them by their feet, the other one's got them under their arm and then one, two, three, and they toss him into the street and he rolls and he's, he's embarrassed and everybody sees him being tossed on his behind in the street. That's what God is saying, headlong. Wow. And the counsel of the froward, the counsel, the the crafty ideas, the enterprises, the agenda is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor hath hope and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Behold, Happy is the man God correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. And let me say this. God is chastening his church. He's not beating us up. He's chastening us. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. In famine? Verse 20, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. I love this verse right here, 21 and 21 and 22. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. And I tell you, it does, it will come. At destruction and famine, Thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Now, let me share this right now. Mm, mm, mm. I got to read verse 24 just to comfort you. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shalt not sin. 25. Thou shalt also... Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great and thine offspring as the grass of the field. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age like a shock of corn cometh in his season. Lo, this we have searched it, so it is. Hear it and know it. Hmm, know thou it for thy good. All right, let me go on and, and read Isaiah 43. That's the next one we're going to deal with. Now, see what God is trying to say not what he's trying to say, what I'm trying to explain of what he just said. Is, yeah, there's going to be trouble. Things are not going to necessarily get better for everybody. For some people, things are going to get much worse. But for God's people, there is a covering, you guys. That's why it said, and shalt not sin. We have to be very careful in through here. Not that works gets us, gets us into heaven, but faith without works is dead. So when you operate in your faith, 
Make sure your faith brings about fruits of righteousness, especially going in through here and make sure you are staying connected to the vine. Do not disconnect from the vine. Do not disconnect from the body of Christ. Do not think you can do this thing flying solo. It is impossible. That is not the way God put this package together. We are intertwined. We are connected from heart to heart, spirit to spirit. Listen to me. And we must keep our connection. Any one of you, when you're going through moments of distress, moments of fear, moments of doubt, you get on that phone and we are to call each other and so that we can boost each other up. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. We must stay connected in the quiet hours of the night. I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning. Rashad knows that and he does it all the time. <laughs> but I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning. Ring my phone. Ring whoever in this group gives you permission to ring them at that hour. You're being, you're battling demons. You're battling fears. You're going through changes. You're struggling with a sin. Confess it. Get prayer. Get encouragement and get your strength back. Don't sit there and wallow in it and think you've got to fight this battle alone. Don't be so ashamed and so prideful and so easily embarrassed that you allow Satan to blackmail your behind. This is not the time to hide. This is the time to keep everything in the light so God can keep you hidden. When God hides you, you're safe. When you hide yourself, you're right at the, at the access of the enemy to attack you at his will. So that's one thing you must be weary of. Do not be quick to hide what you're struggling with. This is the time to keep everything in the light. What do they say about the virus? You keep it in the sunlight. You keep it in the heat. It doesn't like light. It doesn't like heat. Doesn't that sound kind of like the works of darkness? Darkness does not like light. You watch roaches. They scatter when you shine the light on them, don't they? For those of you who have never experienced the roach, yes, read up on it. But for those of us who have, it's a truth. You turn the light on and them babies scatter. And I want to share with you, that's why the people of darkness like to hang out in the night. Yes, their deeds are done in darkness. Their deeds are of the darkness. The people that are in high places running the show. There are people up there that are so in the dark that if you shine a little light in them, they would be totally offended. That's why they're trying to quell the things of God in society. So listen, we have got to remain under God's protection. He will, and I'm telling you this, bit by bit, he said it in his word, he will remove the hedge of protection from around this country, but he will not remove the hedge of protection from his people who are doing it his way his people who are staying connected to him and each other, who are burying themselves in the word, renewing their mind, strengthening their faith, fortifying themselves on the inner man through God's word, through the washing of the water of his word. So I'm going to read Isaiah 43. But see, you must be aware. You must know what's going on around you. There was a time when I was a little kid. I was only seven or eight years old. Went to the store. Didn't know this guy was following me. But because I always had a mind to watch, to be aware of everything going on around me, not just in front of me, not just on the side, but behind me. As I walked down the street, I'm showing you the mindset we have to have in this day and age. When I had that mindset, I'm looking as I walk, the storefronts had beveled windows. They were beveled, not flat or perpendicular or whatever. They were beveled. 
So they would reflect it at an angle. They didn't reflect directly on you. They would reflect what was behind you and they would reflect what was in front of you diagonally. And I watched the bevels that were reflecting behind me so I could see the man following me. And when I crossed the street to test him, all I had to do was turn left. I was on this side of the street, but I went across the street and I crossed and I looked in the windows of the cars and I saw his reflection. And yes, he crossed the street. I said, now this is the real test. I grabbed my key from around my, my neck. I was a latchkey kid. I grabbed my key. My mother was home. And as soon as the cars cluttered up the streets, I was, I was in New York. I knew how to navigate through that. I took off like a bat out of you know where, ran up the stairs, unlocked the door, closed it, locked both dead bolts, and I saw him through the window running across the street trying to catch up with me. And I called my mother, and she came down with a knife, and he finally, the you know, make a long story short, he finally gave up. But he was kicking and banging on that door trying to kick it down. Now, what I want to say to you is if you are not aware, if you're not watching the signs of the times, you will be caught with your drawers down, with your backside in the air. And you'll be sitting there, with, sitting on the ground with your thumb in your mouth, tears running down your face, wondering why God abandoned you. No, he did not abandon you. You abandoned him. Don't turn a deaf ear to God. He is your only safety going through this mess. Your only safety. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Listen, you cannot allow yourself to be manipulated by all the news and all the stuff going on. You must be aware, but not fearful. You must be aware, but full of faith in God, not full of faith in the news, not full of faith in the government to take care of you. No, you better trust in God. He is your only source. He may use the government to help you, but he is your ultimate source, baby cakes. If the government dries up today or tomorrow, you better start reading the word and checking in to those miracles that God did in the Old and New Testament. And you'll know what to ask God for. Lord, I'm out of water. Would you fill my water bottles? He can do that. Oh, yes. Lord, I'm sitting up here, my refrigerator's empty. I can't get to food and food can't get to me. Would you make a way for food to get to me? I'm hungry. God will make a way. Oh, he'll bring you food in the craziest ways. But that's if you're really depending on him. And he'll tell you in advance to load up on this, load up on that, where to get your source your resources. If you've got an ear to hear, you won't be left holding empty bags, totally unprepared, totally unequipped. No, God prepares his people. He warns us in advance, but are you listening? Okay, let me go to Isaiah 43. Oh, help me, Lord. Okay. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee, since thou was precious in my sight. Thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, 
and to the south. Keep not back. Bring my sons from far, my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may justif be justified or let them hear and say it is true. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God for me, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me, there is no Savior. I have declared and, and have saved. I have showed, and there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake. I have sent to Babylon and have brought down their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your holy. I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth the, forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. This is your word. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Don't be like Lot's wife, Pat's two cents. Don't look behind you longing for the way things have always been, longing for the norm, longing for the things that used to be, longing for those hangout places you used to hang out with and those people and the things you used to do. Because, see, God's going to flip this, this script upside down. All right, let me continue reading. Mm. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Now, I'm stopping there. And I want you to hear this. God has got something. And he's got two hands. I'm just making it human. Imagine him with two hands like a human being. In one hand, there are the dregs and the wine of his wrath. In the other hand, is love, joy, peace, blessings, joy unspeakable, full of glory, provision, protection, hmm, wellness, blessings, galore. Now, my question to you is, which hand do you want to eat out of? I'll present it to you right now. Which trough, let's call it a trough, which trough are you going to feed out of? The trough of wrath, pride, haughtiness, hard-headedness, rebellion, self-will, self-centeredness, evil, whatever you want to name it. You want to eat out of God's trough of wrath or do you want to feed on his blessings? Do you want to feed on the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance? Which do you want to feed out of? God says, be ye holy for I am holy. God says, seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. That means repent, y'all. See, that old-fashioned term y'all don't want to hear. Because you want it your way. Life is not Wendy's, baby. Your life belongs to God. Whichever route you choose, it still belongs to God. And he's the one that chooses your consequences. But you're the one that makes the choice. 
on whether you get consequence or blessing by what you feed on. What are you feeding on? Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, I got to have more. Oh, more. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is really, really. Oh, oh, man. Oh, this is good, but it's not satisfying. So I need more. I need more. I, 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 I. Mm. And the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, God knows how to fill you in one moment. You need love, boom, full. You need peace, boom, you're full. See, you don't have to keep running back and forth, uh, trying to, to placate and, 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 and uh, beg and plead and turn your behind up in the air like you do to the world. Begging the world to love you, begging the world to accept you, to, to like you, to, to be good to you, to take care of you. You want the world, so you turn to the bottle and you turn to the joint and you turn to that spoon and, and you turn to that needle and, and, and that little white powder on the table and you, and the straw and you're sucking it up and you're, ah, oh yeah, ah, ah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're looking at that fine hunk and that fine piece of meat that over there on the right. And you're trying to choose between which one because, oh, I got to have me a little something, something. You know, I got knees. I got to satisfy my knees. And you're going through all this crap. And you're on Facebook and you're playing with selfies and you're all caught up in the, in the distractions of the world. And you're watching Beyonce and you're watching this one, that one, and the other one. And you're all amazed thinking, oh, if I could just look like her, or oh, if I was just built like him. I mean, and you're, 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 you're salivating after a lie. It's a facade. And while the facade has got you mesmerized, hypnotized, you got me hypnotized, and you're all caught up in this crap. In these lies, the devil has you mesmerized, hypnotized. You're fixed and you're brain dead. And you're not aware like God wants you to be of what's going on because your senses are dulled. Your conscience is seared as with a hot iron. So everything's okay. You're okay. I'm okay. Everything's okay. All sin is okay. What makes you feel good? Do that. Oh, yes, it's just fine. No, that's all a lie. And while you're sucking up the crap from the enemy, the world is crumbling around you. And you think all you need is a little umbrella from time to time, but you still got time to play. Hey, hey, baby, what it is, what it be like. Mm -hmm. Oh, you looking good to me. Hello. You going to meet me around the corner, in the back, in the corner, in the dark? Because I got a little something for you, baby. Hello. You playing a fool, warming yourself by the devil's fire. And God is calling and begging, pleading on you because he knows what's coming. But you don't. Only God's people who have put their ear to his heartbeat knows what's coming. Only God's people can sense it. They know, okay, we're going to have to wet our roofs. We're going to have to water our lawns. We're going to have to seal our doors. We're going to have to board up our windows because a storm is coming. But they're out there playing. Are you out there playing with them too? Going for the facade? Going for the lies? You're okay. I'm okay. Everything's okay. And that's okay. Everything's going to be all right. As Lynette said in her message, peace and safety. Hey, we're cool. As they used to say back in the day. But I was cool. Everything is copacetic, baby. Oh, yeah. And you sitting up here playing the devil's fool. He's pumping you in your backside. He's sodomizing your life. He's sodomizing your destiny. He's sodomizing everything about you. And you're saying, more, more, more. Ow! 
How do you like it? How do you like it? More, more, more. Okay, okay, okay. More, more, more. more. This is all I know. It's got to be all there is. You fool. Don't go there. Turn to God. Find out what he has for you. Get under the ark of safety, y'all. Don't be out there like the, the, the people around Moses. I mean, the people around Noah who laughed at him when he was, he had an ear to hear from God. He knew trouble was coming. He knew the storm was coming. And he built that boat according to God's instructions. And he did everything he could to prepare for the flood. Did he? Did he not? Yes, he did. And the people out there, like many of you, were out there to play, to eat, drink, be merry, and revel in their sins. While they laughed at the one who was going to be safe. They laughed themselves into their grave. Because when the flood came, it was too late to knock on the door. When God closed the door, and God is the one that closed the door of that ark. When he closed the door, baby, there is no more knocking, begging, pleading. There is no climbing in through the window. It was eternally too late for all of those people. My question to you is when God shuts the door to blessings, and you're caught out there in the flood of all the trouble, the turmoil, the crap that's going to happen in this world, in this country. Some of you are going to die from a variety of, of plagues and diseases, all kind of mutations. But you laughed your way to the bank, didn't you? You laughed your way to your grave. Some of you are sitting up there rushing out to the beauty salons right now. Get your nails done. Ah, oh, I got my nails done. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, sit here, come on. I want rhinestone, and I want pearls, and I want you to really do me up. Oh, it's been so long. I really, really, really want my nails done. So make sure that I'm looking pretty. A week later. Brothers and sisters, here lieth in front of us the body of Sister Appleseed. Sister Appleseed was a wonderful woman. I remember just last week she rushed to the hair salon to get her nails done, and oh, aren't her nails beautiful? But she's no longer with us. That virus took her too. I guess she went out a little too soon. How many of you are going to hear that eulogy spoken over your bodies? Because your silly behinds are in a hurry to get out there in the middle of, 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 of travesty, of, of calamity. You want to get out there. You want to play while the storm is still raging and God's saying, stay in. Stay in. Do not go out. What are you doing? Casual Christians will become casual thieves. Oh. Okay. I hope that you've heard enough between Lynette and me. And somebody else today may have a word too. But this world needs to be warned. God's people need to be comforted and encouraged. And I hope you are. But those of you who have turned your back to God, God's got something for your backside. And I really hope that you change your mind quickly. You don't have to be perfect. Just believe in Christ and receive him in your heart. It's that simple. And if you want to complicate it, then you need to ask God what's going on in your heart that makes you want to complicate things. But it ain't complicated with God. You're either in or you're out. There's no demilitarized zone, baby. No neutral with God. God bless you as you make your choice in these dangerous times. Because trust me, more calamity and more trouble is getting ready to jump off that you ain't never seen before. When God says he's going to do a new thing, 
He's going to do a new thing in the ugly sense of the word, and he's going to do a new thing for his people. Which trough are you going to feed out of? Wrath or blessing? That choice is up to you. Now, in these last days, in these days of trouble, the ball is in your court. I hope you know which one to choose. Choose wisely.